Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Panyam. All right, thanks for watching. And today we'll do something really cool. We'll give some properties of what are called the plastic numbers. So it's very exotic and no, has nothing to do with plastic surgery. <laughs> but it's sort of the Botox of numbers. Actually, funny story though, <laughs> now that I think about it, I was walking in Beverly Hills one day and there was a plastic surgeon, some sign that says Payam Jaron. And this <laughs> literally means Payam the plastic surgeon. Well, I was thought, you know, imagine if I came to LA when I was younger, that may have been my alternative life. <laughs> but I'm glad to be a mathematician. You know, so. <laughs> Alright, so what are the plastic numbers? They were a very neat generalization of the Fibonacci sequence, but in another way. Because another way of generalizing the Fibonacci sequence is with metallic ratios, but that's a story for another day. So what are the plastic numbers? They're solutions of the equation rho cubed equals to rho plus one. I guess there's one real solution for it, and that's what's called the plastic number. And I want to really want you to compare this to the Fibonacci sequence, because the this golden ratio, sorry, not Fibonacci, the uh, golden ratio is x squared equals to x plus one. And the only difference, notice, is the power. For the golden ratio, we have x squared equals to x plus 1. For the plastic numbers, you have rho cubed equals to rho plus 1. So, just a couple of quick properties. I guess I'll do yeah, three of them. First of all, you can multiply this equation by rho to the n minus 3. So if you do rho cubed times rho to the n minus 3, you get rho times rho to the n minus 3 plus rho to the n minus 3. And you get rho to the n equals to rho to the n minus 2 plus rho to the n minus 3. And sort of mentally compare that to the Fibonacci sequence, which says fn equals to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. And remember what does the Fibonacci sequence say? It counts the number of bunnies. I'm not kidding, right? That, uh, <laughs> you know, that are sort of born two years afterwards or two months afterwards. Here it's sort of a delay where it would take you a bunny two months to be produced. Whereas in Fibonacci sequence, it takes one month to be produced. Or something like that, okay? That's first of all, and again, I want to convince you how similar those are to the Fibonacci sequence and to the golden ratio. Now, next thing. Remember this number, x equals to square root of 1 plus square root of 1 plus square root of 1 plus blah blah blah. This is another way of defining the golden ratio because you notice it's very recursive because this number, if you ignore it, 1 plus square root of 1 plus blah blah blah, that's still x. So this whole thing, if you want, that's still x. So x has to satisfy x equals to square root of 1 plus x. And you can solve this. You get x squared equals to x 1 plus x. So x squared equals to x plus 1, which ultimately gives you the golden ratio. Now, for the plastic numbers, I'm claiming that it's a similar thing. Rho equals to cube root of 1 plus cube root of 1 plus dot, dot, dot. And the reason is, if you ignore that, you still get rho. So rho would be the cube root of 1 plus rho. And so, if you want rho cubed equals to rho plus 1 which is exactly the plastic number equation that we have. So, as I said, it's a neat generalization where for the golden ratio, you have square root. For the uh, plastic numbers, you have cube root. Okay. And I lifted the wrong blackboard, whiteboard. Oh. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs>
All right, anyway, oh. and now, third thing, it turns out there's a nice uh, explicit formula for it, if you like cosine or cosh, because um, basically what we want to solve, we want to solve x cubed minus x minus 1 equals to 0, and just use a little identity that's pretty useful. Notice that for cosh cubed of theta minus 3 cosh of theta of theta minus cosh of 3 theta equals to 0. So this you can derive. Just use the, uh, the definition of cosh and then just expand everything out and you get something crazy. But in the end, you can show that this equals to zero. And the question is, how can we transform this into this? Well, the trick is just let x equals to two over square root of three cosh of theta. Because it turns out if you do sort of cosh cubed, it'll simplify with this thing. Then plug in x into this equation. So this is our ansatz. You plug in that ansatz into your equation, and then it simplifies. In the end, I believe what you get is cosh of 3 theta. So this thing, cosh of 3 theta, theta it just simplifies to minus 3 halves, I guess, uh, sorry, just 3 halves, square root of 3, which means you can solve for theta. So you get 3 theta equals to arc cosh. <laughs> when do you see that in life, right? <laughs> 3 halves of square root of 3. So theta is 1 third arc cosh of 3 halves square root of 3. Almost sounds like a swear word. You're such an arc kosh today. Anyway, okay. anyway so <laughs> you have theta is that, and then you can just plug in theta into this equation, and you get x equals to, I guess, 2 over square root of 3 kosh of 1 over 3rd, 1 third arc kosh of 3 <laughs> square root of 3 over 2. I hope YouTube doesn't restrict it again. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> and this is a formula for x if you want in terms of cosh and arc cosh. It's a bit ugly, but in some other video, I, I give a different formulation with uh, uh, cube roots and stuff, which makes a bit more sense. Okay. So that is the third property. And lastly, I want to just give a neat geometric way of doing it, oh, a neat geometric description. It has to do with what are called similar rectangles. So think like uh, aspect ratios in your TV. So geometry. Namely, let's just define the concept of, a si of two rectangles being similar if the ratio of like length and width are the same. So for example, this rectangle with width 3 and length 4, it's similar to the rectangle of width 6 and, uh, sorry, yeah, length 8 and width 6. So um, just like congruent triangles or something. Think congruent rectangles, and it turns out there are three ways okay, of partitioning The following rectangle with 3 and 1, I guess, or let me think, uh, I guess the three ways of partitioning a rectangle, any rectangle actually, into three similar rectangles, namely, here's the first solution. Actually, it might be a specific rectangle, but um, there are three ways of doing something, basically. So first of all, 
me think, might be the square. Yeah, sorry, it's not a square, a square. So it's partitioning a square. First of all, one way of doing it is just suppose the square has length 3. Another way of doing it is just partitioning into three rectangles, each of width 1. Then you notice the aspect ratio is always 3 to 1, 3 to 1, 3 to 1. And so all three of them are similar. So that's one way of doing it. The other way, so solution 2, is to take the square, and let's see, it's length 3, and then one rectangle is this length, so the width is 3 dot 2, sorry, the aspect ratio is 3 to 2, and then notice, another way of going, getting 3 to 2 is just having two rectangles, each with length 3 halves and width 1 and so notice for all two, the other two, the aspect ratio is 3 to 2. Lastly, so notice those have nothing to do with the plastic numbers. <laughs> now, that's just geometry, right? <laughs> and it's been so long I've done, dealt with congruent like things, so <laughs> that's why I'm taking my time. So, and then the third solution, it's super neat. Namely, suppose you have a square, okay. and let one length be row squared, okay. and the other one be one. Okay. So you're partitioning, part, partitioning, partitioning this. Now notice, because it's a square, the other length has to be row squared minus one. Okay. So in particular, this is row squared minus one. Then it turns out this other length, let's define, because we can choose whatever we want here. So let's choose 1 minus 1 over rho squared, and let's figure out what this length is. I'm claiming that this thing, question mark, is nothing else than rho to the fourth minus rho squared. And for this, let's just add up those two things and show that it equals to rho squared. So. Why? So 1 minus 1 over rho squared plus rho to the fourth minus rho squared. Well, let's see. So now let's use the equation for rho. So we know rho cubed equals to rho plus 1. So multiplying by rho, we get rho to the fourth plus rho squared plus rho. And so rho to the fourth minus rho, rho, rho the both, okay. Rho to the fourth minus rho squared is just rho. So we get one minus one over rho squared plus rho. And now we also want to simplify this a little bit. Let's take this equation and divide it by rho squared. So oh, okay. Squared. Yeah, 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 sorry okay. about that. Okay. Rho squared. So we get rho okay. equals to one over rho. Yes. Yeah, one over rho plus 1 over rho squared. Yeah. And so 1 over rho squared equals to rho minus 1 over rho. So this becomes, so minus 1 over rho squared, that becomes 1 minus rho plus 1 over rho. And we still have this plus rho. This cancels out, and we get 1 plus 1 over rho, which is rho plus 1 over rho. And remember, rho plus 1 is rho cubed. So this becomes rho cubed over rho. Last nice. but not least, we get rho squared. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, and indeed you can check. So if this is rho to the fourth minus rho squared, you can indeed check that the aspect ratios of everything is the same. So uh, aspect ratio of this and this, it's either like 1 over rho squared or rho squared, one of the two. And same thing here, rho squared minus 1 over rho to the fourth minus rho squared, it's either uh, rho squared or 1 over rho squared, one of the two. <laughs> All right, then.
I don't know why there are only those three scenarios, but I think it's a cool property of those plastic numbers. And that's all I really have to say about this. If you want to see the derivation, it's in another video. But other than that, if you like this and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Yay! Woo!